Hey guys, we're live. We're live. I'm Jeff with eBay Addicts, and this is my guest today is Jameson. How are you doing today? Fabulous, fabulous. How are you guys doing? Man, awesome, awesome. So go ahead and uh, introduce yourself in case people in the chat don't know who you are, because uh, you're like a uh, you're you're almost like a traveling nomad, but you you're a reseller as well, right? So go ahead, yeah, and yeah. introduce yourself. Tell people what your name is and where you're from and what you do. Awesome. Yeah, my name is uh, Jameson. Um, I've been reselling for full time for over six years now. Um, I'm mainly Amazon FBA. Um, I have a guy that does my eBay stuff for me, my, my Amazon returns, um, and I travel around the country. Um, I've been to 44 states. I've sourced in 44 states. Um, right. right now I live in New Jersey. Um, and uh, yeah, just been reselling and uh, living the dream. <laughs> Yeah, awesome, awesome. So let me say hi to a few people that come in to hang out with us today. Wendy is here. She says, hey, Jeff and friends. We have the Dumpster Diver Dad is here. Says, hey, Jeff. I wanted to say hey to my buddy Katie Reed. She says, Jameson with like two exclamation marks. And looks like we have questions uh, already in the chat. Says, what is your favorite place to source as far as RA and retail arbitrage? And she says, how long have you been reselling? You just said about six years now, correct? Uh, full time, yeah, six, over six years. Okay, awesome. So go ahead. I, I, I really wanted to kind of get into uh, your backstory a little bit because, you know, people people think like, oh, this person's successful on eBay or successful on Amazon. I'm like, no, no one just starts out. They're not just like born successful in a certain category. So kind of what was your backstory a little bit? Like what were you doing before you became a full-time reseller? I kind of want to get into your backstory a little bit if that's cool with you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. So my last real job, um, I was a waiter at Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, I, di I did that for four years. Um, I got fired for texting. Um, but while I was working there, um, I, had, I uh, was addicted to opioids, pain, pain pills um, for a few years. And that really pretty much destroyed my entire life. Um, and that was mainly, I think the reason why I got fired from the job, they just used that as an excuse to fire me. And, um, I've been right. to rehab four times. Um, and I lost everything I had, uh, job apartment. Um, I even got my old eBay account shut down. Um, and I pretty much, I lost everything. Um, I got clean and sober and, um, I pretty much became unemployable. Um, when I was ready to start working again, I would go out, apply jobs and, Nobody was hiring me um, and I would apply. I applied at so many jobs, probably 40, 50 jobs over, you know, a few year period. And it got down to the point where I'm applying at Target to, you know, stock shelves and I'd get an interview, two interviews. They wouldn't call back. Uh, Walmart, you know, interview, second interview, wouldn't call back. And during this time, I was, you know, just flipping stuff on eBay part time, just, you know, just to help buy 99 cents spaghetti and tuna and stuff. And um yeah, I kept trying to get a job. And the more I kept getting turned down, the more I, I want to say like, it basically made me like extremely depressed because I felt like I wasn't worthwhile that yeah. you know, Walmart, I'm not good enough to, to throw a couple cans of beans on the shelf at Walmart, at Target or Walmart. Like, and it really just destroyed me because it was like, these people would give me interviews and they would never call me back. So it was like, I thought something was wrong with me. And um, and I, uh, my very, very last job I applied to was the fossil store in Nashville, Tennessee at the Opera Hills mall. Again, two interviews and no callback. And that was the very last place I ever applied for. And at that time I was still flipping stuff on eBay, solely found out about Amazon. And I was doing that for a while. And, you know, after doing that for a little bit, I started to see that like, there's a little bit of potential in this reselling thing. Like, you know, I'm making, you know, roughly a thousand bucks profit a month now. I'm like, if I push this a little bit harder, this could be a full-time income. Right. And um, thankfully I stuck to it and I just kept doing it and doing it. And, you know, fast forward to, to now six years, you know, in the future. And uh, my Amazon FBA business is going to, I should, I'm on pace to do about 1.5 million this year. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Awesome. Awesome. So, that, that's a lot. So you still sell on eBay and Amazon, both platforms right now, correct? I do eBay a little bit, but I have uh, 
a guy that uh, a friend of mine that sells on eBay for me. Like if I get, you know, damaged stuff from OA or returns from Amazon, he liquidates them on eBay for me. And then we split, you know, we have a, we have a profit that we are, you know, a, a return that we split. He gets whatever and then I get whatever. So that way, cause I just don't see yeah, just to make it easier on me so I can focus on the Amazon side. Yeah, I remember I was in a similar situation when I was younger and I was living at home with my parents. And I remember I couldn't find a job. And they were like, my parents were like, hey, why don't you go apply for this tip agency? So I was like, okay, cool. So I applied to five tip agencies. Wow. And I thought like the very next day I would get a job. You know how many of them called me back? Zero. Um, <laughs> so, so it's like, and I was just like, I was like, I just really w wanted a job because I was like, you know, when you're a young guy, you know, you're 21, 22, 23 years old. You're just like, bro, just, just somebody give me a job. Like I'm willing to work. I'll work nights, weekends, holidays, mm -hmm. whatever you got. Just somebody hire me. I don't care if I'm flipping burgers or working in a warehouse. Yeah, yeah. I just so badly was at a point where I was like, somebody just give me a job doing anything. I just need a job. Mm -hmm. I can't, yeah. my parents are not going to let me just sit home all day and play video games. That is just <laughs> not like going to be like, you know, a, a, an occupation, you know? So yeah, I yeah. definitely have been, I definitely have been in, in a similar situation before where you're just like, man, I keep applying for all these jobs. And I thought worst case scenario, if I apply to five jobs, one of them's going to call me back. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and you're just like, you're knocking on doors and you're like, man, is there, you're like looking at your resume, like, do I have a criminal record? Is there something wrong? Did my breast stink? Like, why can I not get a job? Like I'm trying so hard. So I definitely have been there before. Let me catch up with a few people here in the chat. We got my buddy BK from the Rockies is here today. He says the like, BK, share, man. subscribe and comment. Uh, Katie Reeds is here. The we got uh, Regina. I don't know if you know who Regina is. Uh, Regina is here. We got Rachel R says, hey, Jeff, hello. Thank you for coming in and hanging out with us today. Katie Reed says, wow, what a testimony. Meritix7 is here hanging out. He says, hello, eBay addicts and Jameson. And uh, Dumpster Diver Dad says here, and he says, you sell on eBay as well. So we got a few questions in the chat. Uh, appreciate everybody for coming in and hanging out with us today. Uh, Katie Reed says, what is your favorite place to source RA? And what tips would you give someone on starting reselling with retail arbitrage? Ooh, good questions. Um, right now, my favorite places to do RA, um, they're they're dying now, is is Kmart. That's my favorite place to do RA because yeah. it's one store that still has a little bit that reminds me of Toys R Us. And um, Toys R Us was my favorite store. And I, I love looking for old, rare, discontinued toys because I love that feeling of the hunt. And so Kmart's my favorite store. Um, and thankfully in New Jersey, I have about 10 Kmarts in a couple hour radius of me. And I think that's probably more than anywhere. I think everyone uh, pretty much is closed in the country. So definitely Kmart's my favorite. Okay. Um, and, and tips go, um, I would recommend looking. I mean, I always say this to everybody is that start with categories that you know and that you're familiar with. And for me, it's toys and games. Like I just feel comfortable with those. That's what I enjoy selling. And um, I would look for regional stores in your area. I think Katie, I think she's from Michigan. So like for her, uh, she has Myers there. We don't have that. I love Meyer, And obviously I can't get to that because I'm in Jersey. So I would like focus on that starting. So like look in your region, what you have there, like certain areas have Ollie's or, you know, um, or other regional like stores. Like here on the East Coast, we have, uh, uh, we have BJ's Warehouse, which is a Costco basically. And, you know, the West Coast doesn't have that. So I focus on BJ's. So I would focus on those types of regional stores that you can find stuff that other people can't because that will help eliminate a lot of competition. Yeah, well, you know, somebody, uh, Dumpster Diver Dad says the Sears and Kmart are closed here. You can yeah, go to yeah. other places. I mean, you can hit up Walmart. You can hit up Target. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you can go to there's There's all these different places. You could go to um, GameStop. There's a lot of those that are going out of business. You could get good deals on. Katie says our Ollie's opens this Saturday. So yeah, there's Ollie's. Awesome. There's she awesome. says Love Myers. There's a lot of different places you can go to. Uh Wendy says, What is your biggest your best book flip? So you sell a lot of books? Not anymore. Um when I first started out when I was doing garage sales and thrift stores and stuff like that, my best this I I don't know, this is my favorite and probably one of my only few. I haven't sold a lot of books, but I was at a garage sale like four years ago and a lady had a free pile of just random stuff in there and she had a book in there in the free thing that I grabbed and I ended up selling it for like 160 bucks on eBay or not on eBay on Amazon. 
Um, and that like to me is like the, my main and probably one of my one and few only books that I've ever sold. And that, that just always sticks out to me because I was like, I've never found a, something in a free thing. And that was back when I didn't have a job. I hardly had no money to my name. And, you know, spending $10 on inventory was a lot to me back then. So finding that for in the free bin was like, it just was like crazy awesome. All right. Awesome. So now I want to I want to hit the rewind button for a minute because you said that, you know, you, you sold one point five million dollars in sales on Amazon. So kind of before you even were selling on Amazon, you were selling eBay. I was watching one of your other interviews in the past that you would buy like lots of video games and then you would kind of chop them up, sell them off individually. And that was kind of a way for you to get capital to, to reinvest back in your business. So yes. how does somebody do that? I mean, because if somebody's watching this video and they're like, bro, I don't even sell on Amazon FBA. I'm not even on the Amazon platform. I don't even know, you know, 1.5. Like I make 30 grand a year. Like how does someone go from where you're at, where you're unemployed, you couldn't find a job to, to sell in $1.5 million on Amazon. And before you got to that point, because you've been doing this for six years, it's not like it's something that just happened in two weeks or happens overnight. Sometimes yeah. people have this get rich quit scheme where they're like, man, if I just buy this course or buy this book for three payments of $19.99, I'll, I'll be there. But they yeah, don't yeah. understand like they're, all the work that's behind it and you, you know, hustling and constantly reinvesting money back in your business. So before you got to the point where you're at now, um, what, what were you actually doing to get to that point? Like you said, you were selling on eBay, kind of talk a little bit about how your journey was as far as, uh, being a reseller. Yeah, definitely. Um, pretty much back then it was strictly, I would buy lots of games off of Craigslist. I mean, six years ago, like there was a lot of competition, but it's not like it is now. And so back then it was a lot easier. You could literally go onto Craigslist into the free section. I, I'm assuming you probably can do that now. I'm sure that the things probably get sw swiped up really fast, but like you could yeah. go on the free section back in the day and stuff would be there for like two weeks, just sitting there. Hey, free, come and grab this. Um, you know, I would start with stuff like that. And then as I slowly built up my money, I, my, one of my, and I, I used to flip stuff off of eBay. I would buy lots of games on eBay too, and then turn around, get them and then resell them one at a time. Um, and it pretty much was just garage sales, you know, like the, a lot of people, garage sales, you know, thrift stores. Um, when I first started doing this, I lived in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and thankfully I had great territory because I think, I mean, I don't know about now, but back when I lived there back in 2015 ish, they had, I think, like 35 Goodwills within an hour and a half radius of me or some, something crazy like that. And so in every, uh, the first, I think it was like back then it was the first Saturday of every month, everything was half off. And I would get up at butt crack of dawn that Saturday morning and I would shop every single Goodwill I could until they closed. And I would literally fill up my, my two door beater car with half off clothing and, you know, anything else I could, I could flip on eBay for a profit. And that's how I was, I was able to start building capital, you know, selling electronics and toys, a couple of board games here, a little bit of Legos there. Once in a while, you get lucky and find video games at Goodwill. But it was mostly like clothing and electronics and stuff like that and action figures and, you know, things like that. Like the grab bags that you'll see at Goodwill or Savers when they throw a bunch of action figures in there. You, I would like look them all up on eBay and be like, oh, there's one in there that's worth 50 bucks. All right, three bucks. Let me grab that. You know, you'd find iPods and crazy stuff. And I slowly just kind of started building that up as I went. And, you know, back then was like the craze. Back then there was a craze of like Guitar Hero. And back when the Wii Fit boards were like super profitable and you could find the big giant heavy Wii Fit boards at every Goodwill. And then I would buy those at Goodwill for a dollar or two, then go to GameStop and buy the Wii Fit game or whatever it was for like 99 cents. And then flip those on Amazon for like 40, 50 bucks a bundle. And I would just go and just continue to do that slowly as I built up capital from, you know, doing eBay and Amazon and slowly started to push it more into Amazon as the time went on. Okay. Awesome. But I, I started with $0 basically. I had a couple hundred bucks to my name when I started. So yeah, if you, yeah, know you don't need anything. Saying, he's saying the same things that I tell you guys all the time. Look online, look on Craigslist free section, you know, look on, on apps like offer up. Uh, let go and stuff like that. You look in the free section, you could get stuff to resell. And I tell you guys, you can buy big wholesale lots of stuff. I'm in the process right now. I'm just bought a thousand CDs for like 380 bucks. Mm -hmm. So awesome. when you buy, when their buy cost breaks down to about 38 cents a piece. So, yeah, then I, you know, I'll turn around and sell them for 10, 15, 20 bucks all day long. So let's just say hypothetically they sell for $10 a piece times a thousand. 
you're turning your initial buy cost of $400 into $10,000 worth of merchandise. Mm -hmm. And then you just want to keep recycling and reinvesting your money and reinvesting your capital. And then mm -hmm. that's how you're going to grow and expand your, your business. So uh, first of all, before we get too far, I don't want to miss people in the chat. We got eBliss Reseller Solutions in the chat. He says, do you go to the Jackson Outlet? I don't know what the Jackson Outlet is, but can you talk I, a little bit about that? Um, the, the, I, the Jackson Outlet, I do not think I even know what that is, honestly. Um, uh, I don't do outlet malls really that much. I don't do a lot of apparel um, or shoes and stuff like that. Um, oh, Jackson, is it the Jackson Premium Outlets? I just looked it up. It's like an hour for me, if, if that's what he's talking about in South Jersey. Um you know what? I actually did go there actually like a year ago. I went there. I was chasing so actually a clothing item like about a year ago and I went there and I think it was like a Columbia or North Face. I don't even remember. It was a long time ago. Um, yo, what's up, flipping accountant? <laughs> My boy. <laughs> yo, you know the flipping accountant, huh? Yeah, yeah, we chat. Yeah, yeah, we're cool. Yeah, I've known him on, 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 online for like I think like a couple years now, I think. Oh, well, the flipping accountant, his channel is taking off. He just hit 2,000 uh, subscribers recently. He was just Congrats, on a live stream yesterday, and he was just talking about you and Rake and Profit and Bonafides that he ran into you guys a long time ago. But, yeah, he's a he's a YouTuber now, so you need to go look him up, man. He just hit 2,000 subscribers. He's been killing it with this, uh, yeah, this, this, this Walmart retail arbitrage. He's been killing it. So Dumpster Diver Dad says, love selling video games on Amazon. Katie Reed says, Jameson, are you on YouTube? You do have an old YouTube account that I, I found do. in LinkedIn in the description so yeah, i don't know if you posted any videos lately up in like four years all right <laughs> so a few old videos up <laughs> yeah yeah so i i did i did kind of go do some like you know recon and i did find his youtube channel for you guys and i linked it in the description so <laughs> even though even I, though i wanted to get back into it so long it just yeah well, i gotta you, you I gotta just have to find, find enough hours in a day it's like you know you're doing your retail arbitrage you're traveling you know you're gonna hit in the gym doing your workout you were just here in florida not too long ago and like mm -hmm. by the time you you left town when i messaged you and you're like yeah bro i already left town and i'm like okay well oh, yeah, i'll just yeah, catch yeah. you next time because you always look like you're happy and you always have a good time and you enjoy what you're doing so let me yeah. Yeah. Look, he says you're the taco king in the house. So <laughs> let me catch a few people in the air real quick. We got uh, the flipping accountant is here. Katie reads. Uh, Wendy is here. He says, yeah, Jameis and I met a few years back yeah. in Las Vegas at the ASD green mm. room in the house. And uh, he says, loving the informational content. Appreciate yeah, you, for sure. Man. For sure. So, so talk to me a little bit, Jameson. I wanted to get back into this reselling content. So how long were you selling on eBay before you were just like, hey, I'm going to do this switch and focus on Amazon. And when, when you were doing this Amazon thing, because I want people to understand, like, you didn't just go from zero to 1.5 million in sales overnight. Like mm -hmm. I, I tell people all the time, you have to continuously reinvest, you know, your, your dividends, your money back into your business. So can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that? Like kind of what your experience is like? And if you if someone is kind of hesitant, if they're like, well, I've been on eBay, but this, you know, Amazon is intimidating. I don't know if I want to jump on this platform. I don't know what experience I need. I don't know how to get started. Like, go, let's go ahead and talk about that a little bit, because most of the people on, on my channel are, are eBay resellers. And we have a handful of Amazon sellers, but sometimes it goes like right over their head when we talk yeah, about it. Yeah. So let, let's break that down a little bit. Um, yeah, I definitely would recommend learning to, I don't want to say master eBay but definitely be know the ins and outs of everything because Amazon completely different and the things that are okay on eBay are not okay on Amazon sometimes. And you know, Amazon's a lot more strict. It's a lot harder to get on Amazon now. And then when you do get on, you know, you have to worry about getting approvals in certain brands, like, you know, say a brand new brand, like th this is a good example that I think a lot of people would run into a brand new game on eBay, like a sealed board game could be brand new on eBay have like a little tear in the plastic or a slight ding that's new on eBay, but on Amazon, that wouldn't be considered brand new, you know? And so that the, the rules are completely different. The terms of service are completely different. And, and I don't say that to scare anybody away. It's just that make sure you do your due diligence and like you like kind of fully slowly get into Amazon and learn. Cause there's a lot more ins and outs and there's a lot more technical stuff and like systems that you need to have in place, you know, to kind of like run Amazon better. Cause yeah. it's just, a completely different, you know, universe. Um, but yeah, start slow, you know, start really slow and kind of, you know, make sure you can look at the terms of service and stuff. And I would definitely like recommend staying out. Of, what are those things? The, the thing where the, the chat things where everyone about Amazon, what are those called? The, uh, um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. 
but there's like uh, not blogs or whatever, but like like chat rooms where everyone's talking about Amazon. Like I think it's on the Amazon thing. Stay out of those. Like there's a lot of bad information in those things. And like you'll have someone that just started on Amazon today. They'll be giving you all this advice and it's like wrong. And, you know, doing the wrong thing on Amazon could get you in trouble, you know. So there's a lot of ins and outs that it definitely took me years. I'm still learning all the ins and outs of Amazon. Yeah, um, but but if someone wanted to get started, because another thing that kind of pulls people back on Amazon is they're gated in a lot of categories. So I've been meaning to ask you, out of that 1.5 million in sales you had, how many of it is doing RA, which is retail arbitrage, and how much of it is you doing like wholesaling accounts, where you got you get a wholesale distributor, and then maybe you know you you buy an item for a certain price, and then you charge retail price, and then maybe you're making 10, 15, 20 bucks on every item that sells. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so the so uh, last year, um, I'm, or the 2020 year, I did one uh, 1.008 million just in the last last calendar year, um, and the majority of that is, I would say, majority is RA, and I would say probably 45 percent or so is RA, and then the other 40 percent or so is uh, is online arbitrage. And then I do do some wholesale, but it's the wholesale that I do is more of like closeouts and stuff like that. Like I buy disc, discontinued toys um, in bulk, you know, like where I might buy a thousand of one toy and slowly trickle that out over the next six months or a year. Um, should I forgot what was that? What was the original question you said? <laughs> no, I was just asking like what percentage of the items <laughs> that you sold were retail arbitrage and what percentage of it is items that you bought wholesale? Okay, yeah. So wholesale probably I would say maybe ten percent, um, but I'm mostly online arbitrage and retail arbitrage. Okay, yeah, man. I always see people like you and Bearded Picker traveling across the country and going to these you know different stores doing retail arbitrage, and it always looks so fun, uh, you know, traveling and staying in hotels, and then you boxing the stuff up and shipping it out on the road. So give me like a uh, top three or four. Like, give me like a checklist of things. Like, if I want to be successful on Amazon, give me like your top two or three or four things of checklist things that I need to do in order to be successful on Amazon or just reselling in general. Um, let me see. I would say this is somewhere where I lack, and I and I'm starting to work on this this year a lot more than I have in the past. Is that keep track of your money and where it's going and where it's coming from, and keep track of you know, like when you sell something on Amazon and, you know, maybe the item goes missing or it gets damaged and stuff like that. Keep in, keep track of that. And it gets really hectic when you start to scale up when you're by yourself. It gets hard to keep track of where all your money is going, where it's coming in. You got money going out. You got money coming in. And then you start to bleed money in your business where you don't have to. And this is something I've been guilty of, like really bad in my business. And that's something I, I'm really focusing on. I'm starting to get systems in place and spreadsheets and, you know, recording all my inventory that I get online so I can keep track of, did that order show up? Was anything damaged? You know, do I need to return anything back to the store because it came and it was broken or something like that? Is just, you know, really try to learn. Real, if you start that stuff early on, like when as you grow, you'll be able to keep up with that and learn how to have a good system in place. Keep your receipts online, in store. Um, you know, you will, you, you know, you may need those if you ever get audited or if you ever have an inauthentic claim on Amazon and it's, um, what else to, yeah. And, and, um, wow, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> um, and also, yeah, like I said before, you know, stick with stuff that you know and stick with the categories you're comfortable with. You know, um, for me personally, like I stick to the majority of toys and games. Like I've, I've, I don't want to say I've mastered those categories, but I'm very good in them. And I don't try to like venture out to too many other categories. That's just how my business works. But I see a lot of people, they'll sell in 50 different categories, spread themselves thin. And then the next thing you know, they got just so much going on that they're, 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 they're not running a successful business. So I would start with categories you're super comfortable with and slowly branch out if that's what you need to do. Like for me, like my, 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 my mission is right here and I don't come off that path for anything. I try to minimize stress and hassle in my life. And so I don't try to, like, I don't allow myself to get shiny object, object, object syndrome where I'm jumping off the path, doing all these other things. And next thing you know, I'm losing money in every direction. And it's just, uh -huh. you know, really hard to keep track of the money. You know, early yeah, I'm, the, I'm the same way. I see something and I'm like, oh, I can, I can do this. I can do this. And it's like, but I'm just like, no, I'm like, there's your projects and things you're working on. Get these projects done first and then you can start another little side project. But for right now, mm. just keep doing what you're doing. So what, what is your bread and butter? Like, what is your niche items that you sell the most? You sell toys, 
Do you sell video games, electronics? Like, what is the items that is killing it for you right now? <clears throat> um, right now, uh, mostly toys. Um, that's the main thing that I do sell. I do, you know, uh, like some video games. I've kind of slowly getting away from the video games just because the category hasn't been as good as it was in past years. Um, but mostly just toys right now. Um, I try to find, you know, a handful of SKUs that are really good that I can just go super deep on and just, you know, where I'm selling 20, 30, 40 units of that toy a day and I can make up for it in volume and make a little bit of less money on the front end, but the volume is there to keep that, you know, keep the money going. And so I just really try to stay ahead of trends and like, you know, I'm on Walmart's website and, you know, I'm using different softwares to kind of keep track of different things. And, you know, if a new exclusive toy comes out, I'll do my research. Is it limited? Is it in store or online only? And then I'll try to like, you know, figure out what to do. And then I'll just pounce on that skew and I'll just go, you know, crazy deep on it if I can. Right. Awesome. Uh, let me, we, I don't want to neglect the chat. I wanted to say, Hey, to cheap buying gold mines. I wanted to say, Hey, to e, -bl e, e bliss reseller solutions. He says profits, not projects. Uh, we got the flipping accountant. He says, where are you headed to next? So you're a, you're a, a traveler. He wants to know where you're going to be heading to next. You're going to um, a town near you, right? <laughs> head, I'll, I'll be in Missouri next, uh, next, uh, next month. I'm going to, uh, an Amazon event in Missouri. And then I'm also, uh, while I go there, I'm doing, I'm taking part in a private label thing. Uh, I'm going to dive into some, try to try, dive into private label this year. So yeah, I'm going to take a private label course while I'm there. Okay, cool. The flipping accountant says eat tacos, be positive and smile. Hmm. So I'm there we go. To, man, eating tacos sounds good. I'm in on that one. So Meritic <laughs> 7 says, how do you deal with high volume returns on Amazon? So do you have a lot of returns on Amazon? And, and is that like a deal breaker for you? Because it seems like to me that you're a high volume seller that if you have one or two returns, it's not, it's not the end of the world, right? Yeah. Um, when I, when I first started reselling, you know, like on eBay and stuff like that, and like when I wasn't doing a lot on Amazon, the returns would just destroy me. You know, you get a, you get a hundred dollar return where a customer swaps out a video game or something like that. That used to just destroy me when I could like it. And, and I didn't have a lot of money. Like I remember like, like like six years ago, I found a brand new Pac-Man joystick. You know, you plug into the TV game on eBay uh, in the Goodwill and I sold it on eBay for like 150 bucks. It was like my highest sale ever. And the guy was asking all these weird questions about it and I didn't have a good feeling about it. And sure enough, he bought it. He swapped it out for an old broken one, sent it back. And that destroyed me. And one thing that I've learned is that, you know, it, the, once you get the volume up, that stuff, like the, the returns generally are such a small portion of the business. Like, and, and, and like I said earlier, it's too like stick to stick. I personally like toys and video games because the return rate is so low. I mean, my, I, I think like last year, I think I sold 35,000 items last year on Amazon. And I wow. think my, my return rate was like 2.6%. I mean, that's like, you know, that's almost nothing compared to that. And so like, that's why I personally like to right. stay away from shoes and clothing on Amazon. Cause that's can be around 10 to 15% returns. And that can, you know, I mean, I know, I know a lot of successful shoe sellers out there, so I'm not like knocking, not knocking it at all. Um, just for me personally, I like to minimize just having to deal with hassle returns, swap outs and scams and stuff like that. Awesome. Katie Reed says, make sure to smile. Yeah. You're, you're a happy guy. You're always, you're always happy and smiling every time I see you. It looks like you're always having a good time. I wanted to say hey to my buddy, Richie Hustles. If you guys haven't been following Richie Hustles, he's been blowing up online, man. I think he just hit like 20,000 20, subscribers, and oh, he does a lot yes. of uh, retail arbitrage on Amazon. Awesome. So if you get a chance to no, check out, check him out. I was just talking to him on Instagram last week, and he's, he's a hustler. He said he's thinking about moving down to Florida, so I was like, hey, bro, come on down. We'll, we'll find you a spot down by the beach. Florida. Yeah, right here with the thirst and the waves and – Right, for sure, for sure. Wanted to say hey to, to uh, Flippin' Eric and uh, Fernando2430. Nice. Yeah, the forums. <laughs> yeah, the forums. <laughs> the, yeah. yeah, stay out of the Amazon <laughs> Seller Central forums. Like, oh, there's a yeah. lot of bad guys. Little W is here, says, hey, Jeff, a Little new Debbie? friend, Jameson. He says, so you're a reseller and what else? Like, you got to be something else. Tell us what else, what else is it that you do in your free time besides just being a, a full-time reseller? Um, the people want to know. I love to read, man. Um, I, I love self-development. I like working on the inner me. That's like between reselling and working on me are like, you know, my two favorite things to do. Um, I think it's super important to be whole on the inside. So that way you can give to people on the outside, you know? So like, I'm really big into like, you know, personal development and, 
and just, you know, making sure I'm happy, you know, like, cause that's the most important thing. Cause I know if I work on what's on the inside, my business is going to flow and grow so much bigger and better. If I know that I'm a hundred percent, you know, like I, I see a lot of people run themselves thin where they're constantly hustling 15, 16, 17 hours a day, which is, you know, it's cool to a point, but after a while you're going to burn out, you know, that's going to, that's going to have an effect on you. And so I try to make sure I'm a hundred percent and I balance that with my reselling. So that way, like, things are always flowing, you know, generally good and, and good for me because I make sure I take care of me first, you know, my diets and stuff like that. And, you know, I, and, and that's why I try to, you know, that's why I think I'm, a little, uh, you know, I'm always ha generally happy and having a good time is because I make sure I come first and the business comes second. Yeah. You, you got to take care of yourselves guys. I, I have, um, I've been having issues with my back lately and I'm one day next week, I'm just going to take a day or two off from work. And there's a, uh, a chiropractor that I go by and see He's on the East coast of Florida. And he, he, uh, he, he, he works on professional athletes and professional wrestlers and stuff mm. like this guy's legit. And I'm just going to make an appointment and just go by and have this chiropractor work on me. And my mom lives on the East coast of Melbourne. So I'm just going to have a day and just hang out at the beach and hang out with my mom and our family. <laughs> And just have a day or two and just have the chiropractor just, you know, do adjustments because you can't perform and be like your peak self if you don't feel good. Like if you feel like your, your wheels are stuck in the mud and you're just spinning your wheels, you can't perform. You know, you might have all the head knowledge, but if it's like if you feel sick and you feel ill and your body isn't performing properly, like, you know, it's like people see on TV like only athletes need to take care of themselves. Like, no, regular people need to take care of themselves too, mm -hmm. you know. So that's really important. I wanted to say hey to – uh uh, flip, uh, thrip and flip. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name yeah, properly. Are you doing, brother? Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Richie Hustle Florida says, amazing, I love man. Florida. Yeah, man. So when you get a I chance, forget Florida, forget New York and New Jersey. Just come down here to Florida. You know what? Just get you a second home down here in Florida. <laughs> you know, the best thing about it is you pay zero state taxes. I know. They, that, that, they, that, they, that, yep, that's, yeah, that's they, they probably don't tell you that in New Jersey, but I was like, <laughs> just no way. zero state tax, Florida. It's 80 degrees year round. Come down here, you know. He says that's why we got YouTube to fill that income. Hey, hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's important to have multiple streams of income. Little Debbie says, I love my job. I finally realized how important it is. And uh, eBliss e e Reseller says on eBay, electronics is eight return rate is great. 2% if your biz is awesome. And uh, he's, I got a question in the chat says, which video games sell best for you? PS2, Xbox 360, et cetera. Um, pretty much. I mean, I would say I sell a lot of switch, you know, PS4, you know, Xbox one. Those are probably the main things that I, that I resell. Um, and it's mostly stuff that I find from Walmart or targets, um, or if like Best Buy has like a one day, you know, one of their, their like whatever daily deals or whatever, they'll do like a limit 25. I'll, I'll pop on some of those sometimes, but yeah, mostly there's the newer stuff. Um, I haven't done much of the older stuff. Maybe sometimes Xbox 360. I'll find a couple on Walmart, a couple sealed ones that are pretty good. Um, but yeah, mostly just the newer stuff. Um, yeah, I, I would just tell you guys a secret. If you just list it, it'll sell. <laughs> That's the big secret. Like just just list it because I mean, you believe it or not, even old stuff, PS2, PS3, Xbox 360, all those things will sell. You just have to list them. I mean, I sold um, I sold a couple of. Sold an Xbox 360, a PS2 game today. I sold a DVD today for 30 bucks. I paid 50 cents for it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know. So I mean, I basically like one item. I turned like two dollars into 50 bucks. So just keep oh, listing nice. items, and then then they'll, it'll sell. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about retail arbitrage because I heard that you uh, found some video games for three cents at Walmart. So I want to talk a little bit about that now. Tell us a secret. When you're at Walmart, you're in the clearance section. How do you know what items you can you can find and you can pick up for? three cents because we're talking about finding stuff pennies on the dollar when you're doing a little bit of retail arbitrage and maybe you have a couple of other you know tips or tricks or things behind the scenes because this is your full-time job uh yeah. you know being a reseller so you have any other mm -hmm. tips or tricks or advice or anything that you could tell us um the the three cent game thing is like so far and few in between that i find them mm -hmm. um Back in th this was like this was just like a happened I happened to find a game left over from years ago, but it uh, in January 2017 Walmart took a bunch of their video games and like other you know electronics and stuff that they're basically were supposed to send them back to the manufacturer or wherever they get sent back to, and they basically zeroed out or three you know three cent outed a bunch of video games like tons of titles 
And some of these, you know, you go into Walmart and there would be 10, 15, 20 deep of this game of certain games. And, you know, back in 2017, it was a gold mine. I was driving around the country just looking for three cent games, filling up my car. And now I think I, I found a few of them this 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 year. And it's just a couple that were just randomly left over. So when when I'm when I am in Walmart, if you happen to see some old, you know, PS3 games and you know Xbox 360, maybe like uh, uh, DS games, um, you log onto the. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows this trick already, but you you get the Walmart app, you log onto their Wi-Fi, and make sure you have the store location set up to that location, and you can scan it on the Walmart app, and it'll tell you what the price is. And so. I did that. I would literally all the games in the case at Walmart, I would go through because you can scan it through the case on the Walmart app and it'll bring up the price. And sometimes the price, it may say 60 bucks on the tag, but it may ring up for five or 10 or whatever, you know, you never know. And so I would go through all that. And then I ended up finding all these different titles that were three cents. Um, and I just happened to get lucky uh, uh, like a month or two ago. I found a couple for three cents that were like left over from from three years ago. Um so yeah, it's 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 they're not very common. It was like probably the only few that I have found in the last year and a half. Okay, awesome. Um, let me catch a few people in the chat real quick. Uh, Cheap Fine Goldmine says Fallout for PS3 sealed was three cents. Richie Hustle says Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour. Uh, we have a buddy here, the Lone Star Picker says hello, everyone. Jeff and Jameson, glad to hear you guys are discussing the beeswax. And uh, I wanted to say <laughs> hey to my buddy Mel back from Burnout that lives all the way in Australia. I'm glad awesome. to see you here. She's one of my favorite content creators. So if you guys want to learn about selling books on eBay, you should definitely go by and check out her channel. And uh, I wanted to say hey to Richie Hustle. She says, says, I've been selling a lot of clothing lately. The return rate was a little higher than other categories. However, the markup mm -hmm. was two to 300 ROI items okay. for Marshalls. I wanted to say it, say, hey, to Sal is in the chat. Eblis reseller says, New Jersey taxes, you're left and right. <laughs> and the easy good. pass and yep. a fancy name for tax. Yep. And the middleman <laughs> picker says, uh, says, hey, everyone, I'm in Florida also. Also, hey. also, what part of Florida are you from? Yeah, I wasn't. I was actually born in Jacksonville and I was in Kentucky for about 30 years. And after my company downsized in 2016, I was like, what am I still here for? You know, it's like, I, I don't know why I need to freeze my butt off for six months out of the year. And I moved yeah. down here to Tampa. And to be honest, I haven't been back to Kentucky to visit my family ever since I left. Like, you know, they'll call me up and say, it's snowing. And I'm like, bro, it's 82 degrees down here in Florida. So I'll see you when you get down here. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, man, some of these states, they'll tax you left and right. We got a uh, pin is in the chat. Uh, little Debbie is here. Lone Star Picker says, have you mentioned the biggest mistake that you made so far on Amazon? And what is it that you hope that you will never make? And what is your biggest success so far? This guy here, he's, he's a hustler, man. He said he's doing $1.5 million in sales on Amazon. So he wants to know, do you have, what is your biggest mistake that you made so far on Amazon? You know, I was thinking about putting a post today on my community section that just says, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. You know, you're going to fail your way to success. You know, when you're in school and the teacher puts all those red X's on your paper, it's like, oh, you screwed up or you, you know, you forgot to put a paragraph here or an indention there. And I'm just like, bro, in the real world, it's okay to make mistakes. Like that's how you learn. That's how you get better. You know, it's not the end of the world. If you screw up and make mistakes, guess what? Tomorrow's another day and you're going to learn from your mistakes and get better at it. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, he says, what is some of the biggest mistakes you made so far on Amazon? And what is the mistake that you hope that you won't make? And he wants to know, what is your biggest success so far? Oof, man. Good question. Good question. Um, some of the biggest mistakes that I've made on Amazon, um, are definitely like this, this was more like, you know, this was a few years ago when I was like, you know, starting to grow, but still I was, I guess I was arrogant back then a little like, and, and I thought I knew everything and I would buy stuff left yeah. and right, not just being dumb. And uh, I went to ASD, which is a trade show in Vegas. Um, I think this was back in, 2016 and I dropped like $5,000 on these like Funko Comic-Con type, type exclusive toys. I bought like seven different SKUs. There were no Amazon set. There was no Amazon listings. I thought I was gonna be like, Oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to buy all these. I want to make the Amazon listings. I'm going to sell them. I'm going to make bank. I'm going to freaking you know, can be, you know, and, and, and I bought all these and ended up getting all the listings up and it ended up being probably my worst buy on Amazon ever. And 
I ended up having Amazon destroy a lot of it. I think one SKU I did good on, but the other like six SKUs uh, was a mixture between me throwing some at the Goodwill, me having Amazon destroy them, or me throwing them in the trash. And I ended up losing, you know, tons of money because of, you know storage fees on on top of my buying fees and the, the like. Some of the things like ended up having like you know one point five or one million rank in toys and just they never took off. And that taught me a huge valuable lesson is that like I need to make sure that I know what I'm getting myself into. Right. And, and and I did take advice from another reseller too. Then that was super good with Funko Pops and I just like assume they knew everything like i was like okay this guy's right. smart all right cool he says they buy him all right they gotta be good all right here here's my credit card five grand let's go and i pretty much lo like pretty much i probably lost more than five grand you know with all the shipping and and storage fees for seven eight months and some of the items and then paying amazon to dispose them and right. that really taught me to like make sure i do my own research and it's in in a, and i'm and I'm happy that that happened now because it really made me slow things down and realize like, hey, like you need to stop being an idiot. You know, do the research on your products. Make sure you're doing you're making good buys. And I, I jumped into something I had nothing. I didn't know anything about. I don't know anything about Funko Pops or, you know, or Comic-Con exclusives. And I just took somebody else's advice and went full in without doing my own research. And I jumped in. And that's why right now I'm more here's my line. And I'm on that. I'm not jumping off for stuff yeah. that I don't understand. That's fine. If, if, if hey, if there's a, an opportunity that I can make a thousand dollars on a toy or, or an item that I'm not familiar with, that's all right. I'm going to keep going and do with what I know because I know there's always going to be other opportunities there. And just, you know, make sure I do the research and don't jump too deep and go too hard on things you don't understand. Yeah, um, for sure. It's, it's funny you said that because I was just, you know, my listing live last week and the question similar to that came up and I said, guys, just, you know, the biggest thing Warren Buffett says is don't put money, don't invest money in something you don't understand. That's like mm. one of the biggest things that 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 can come from me. That was coming from Warren Buffett. So if there's a category, if there's something that you don't understand, don't put no money in it. That's OK. Like, you know, I think about how much money that I missed out on if I would have dropped, dropped 10 grand into Bitcoin right now. But it was something I just didn't understand. And so mm -hmm. do I regret it? No, because it, it was something I didn't understand. You know, mm -hmm. sure. Would I like to go buy it for three dollars a coin bitcoin or whatever and it's selling for twenty thousand dollars or whatever now but i just didn't understand the technology and no one could convince me to say hey jeff yeah go drop 20 grand or 10 grand into bitcoin i'll be like no i'm just mm -hmm. i'm just I, I would not understand the concept so it's like you can't have regrets if it's something that you don't understand just don't put any money in it and uh, the second part of lone star's question he, he wants to know what is your biggest success so far like where you just hit something out of the park and it's been a, a home run for you um, I would say my most, I guess my, my, my most recent amazing buy, um, this was, uh, last year. Um, this is probably, probably the one skew that I probably made the most on out of any, uh, any other item last year is, uh, last year, um, right before Halloween, or actually, no, I think this was back in July actually. And this is probably in, in, and I, and, and uh, I was on Walmart one day and like uh, and, uh, and Walmart had a pre-order for some Mandalorian costumes for 15 bucks. And we looked around a little bit and they're on other sites. They were 30, 35, 40 retail. And this was a pre-order, no Amazon listing. This was back in July. And I was like, all right, cool. They had, you know, they had a small, medium and large limit was, you know, 99 per 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 thing. It's like, all right, this seems like a safe buy here. You know, the retail's 35 to 40 bucks. Walmart's got them for 15. I don't see how I can lose here. And so I bought a hundred of each, small, medium, and large. And, um, you know, they got released, I think in, in September, they shipped them to me and there was an Amazon listing up and I sold all of them in probably two weeks, three weeks for 40 to 80 bucks a pop. Like, and, and I think I averaged like right around $25 profit per units and i think i made like right around like 7k profit like 6k profit off of that one skew and that was probably my number one probably best flip on any one skew that i've made all right awesome richie hustles is in the chat he says what repricer are you using and Ooh. why um i use and i and i know i don't think this is the best one out on the market right now um i'm using uh informed right now and I've considered switching to seller snap. I know a lot of my friends use seller snap, um, but that one's really expensive and I just 
haven't decided if I want to like switch over to that. And I, I'm, I'm using Inform still because I, I paid for a year. Um, I had a auto renew on last uh, a few months ago, so I paid for a year. So I'm going to be with them for, you know, another nine months. Um, I, I mean, I like them. They're decent. I mean, I've been using it for like four years. Um, so I, I can't say I've never really used any other repricer. So I can't say it's any be better than anything else. Um, but definitely I'm, I'm considering like seller snap. I know that's like the hip new one that's supposed to be really good that I know a lot of people do use. All right. Awesome. Uh, so we got a question here from Eblis reseller solutions. He said, Jameson, uh, Ooh. Tennessee barbecue or Jersey pizza. What's one of your favorite? Uh, I'm going Tennessee barbecue for sure. I love Tennessee barbecue. Um, personally, I haven't had any good pizza in Jersey. If I'm going to be honest. Now, you switch that to New York pizza. I'm picking New York pizza over New Tennessee barbecue any day. I love New York pizza. I love a good slice of Jim's pizza. So, so Jameson, with, with the little time that I have with you left, man, I yeah. kind of want to get to the nuts and bolts of Amazon. Yeah. So if you if you sold, hypothetically, if you sold $1.5 million in sales on Amazon, what percentage of that would you say is profit? Because you have to pay Amazon's pick and pack fee. They have storage fees. They, there, there's fees involved with Amazon FBA. And most of your items aren't merchant fulfilled. They're Amazon FBA fulfilled, correct? Correct, yes. Um, oh, you know... I, I know a lot of people avoid this question and I'm going to probably avoid it too. Um, not that I don't, not that I'm like, I'm like one of those people that like tries to hide and stuff like that. It's just, I like to keep what I make private. And um, I, I obviously I could say like, yeah, I make a full-time income and it pays my bills and I'm growing my business. Um, but just personally, I like to keep the money like off of like a video and stuff like like privately if we we're at we we're hanging out in a room and we were talking like i would totally share that with friends and stuff but just on the video i like to keep that off a uh, off a of video well, I'm, I'm not trying to meddle in your personal affairs i'm just bringing it up just in case somebody was interested in being a reseller would they typically get 30 percent, 40 50 percent like if, so, if let's say hypothetically if i made a thousand dollars in sales on amazon what can i typically make to, to expect a return of my money so let's say if i if i went on amazon let's say i was selling video games games or electronics or whatever it is, clothing, and I sold a thousand dollars worth of merchandise on Amazon, how much of that could I typically expect to make bring home of that being profit is what I'm trying to find out. I wasn't trying to ask yeah, you of course. Um I mean I yeah. just, I think my average mar like profit like return uh, ROI is like I think right around 22% or something like that. Um, maybe maybe a little bit less. And that's before you know all my softwares that I'm paying for and you know everything else and taxes and everything like that but i mean yeah i mean you know some people and i've you know sometimes right around 25 percent, you know and that's obviously before taxes and you know softwares and everything else that you have and stuff like that so yeah give, yeah it depends on what type of item too i know clothes they do have a bigger return i know that for sure or a bigger you know you get better margin okay yeah i was thinking it was going to be around 25 30 percent i wasn't trying to like get in your face and as your personal yeah, business. Yeah. I just meant it because if we if someone is not on the Amazon platform and they're considering it, if they're like, okay, let's say hypothetically, if I made a million dollars in sales, how much of that could I actually have? And what percentage of that would you say um, it, it, you would have to like reinvest back in your business? Because let's say hypothetically, you made 300,000 this year, let's say in net profit, okay? Mm -hmm. How much of that would you say I have to reinvest and to buy in more inventory because the thing is if you don't reinvest your money in your business it'll kind of plateau and then it'll go down a little bit and that's the same thing for ebay and amazon like you can't just yeah. be like hey i made five hundred dollars in sales and all 500 of that goes in my pocket you yeah, have there's yeah. a large portion of that you have to immediately reinvest back into your business or it's gonna not gonna it's not gonna grow it's not gonna scale yeah definitely definitely um yeah i try to reinvest as much as i can you know i do take out money for pizza and tacos and stuff like that um, and then I pretty much just try to keep growing it as much as I can. Um, um, and just, you know, keep buying more inventory and, and right now I'm focusing this year, I'm trying to focus on toy holds where like, you know, when Walmart and target do their clearance in January, like I was up just filling carts up at every single store buying stuff. I know nobody else is buying. So it helps eliminate my competition. And then I hold that, you know, for three, six months, nine months, a year, and then I resell it for, you know, even greater markup then. So that's what I'm really focusing on this year. So I'm reinvesting my money into toy holds right now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Eblis says all fees, Amazon fees are usually around 30%. Uh, and then, yeah, and then you have your cost of goods in there and then you have your 
your little portion of profit. Uh, Richie Hustle says Amazon in the future. We yeah. got the Lone Star Picker is here in the chat hanging out with us. And we have Mountain Man Treasure is in the chat. Hey, it's Mountain Man, I hope you're having a good day. I hope you're doing well. And the middleman picker says the best question is what percentage of that is profit. See, I, I, we were just talking about that. So, so, but like I said, it's easy to say, oh yeah, I made 200 grand or 300 grand this year in income. But what they don't realize is if you're taking 75, 80% of that and reinvesting it back in your business, you know, mm -hmm. then, then, then you only have this percentage of left over for you to actually live yeah. off of and pay your bills. So that's the thing I, that I would say, like, if you're doing eBay or Amazon part time, like I, I would not just quit your full time job and just be a reseller mm -hmm. right away. Because what you don't realize is you have a, an advantage over other resellers is because you have a paycheck coming in, a guaranteed check coming in every week to pay your living expenses, to pay your light bill, gas, groceries, rent, whatever you need. And then you have a separate income coming in mm -hmm. from your reselling and you have a big advantage of being able to reinvest your money back into your business. And instead of saying, oh, now I need to, I need to pay myself $2,000 this month or whatever to pay my bills. So do you have anything else that you could give us that uh, you could give us like maybe tips or tricks or any advice? That, that would be it. Like, give me some like uh, advice that you would give to somebody. If, if, if you could go back in time and talk to your past self six years ago previously, and you're just getting started into reselling, what would you go back and tell your younger self? Like what a point or advice would you give somebody who's a, a new reseller or a part-time reseller? What, what type of advice would you give yourself from six years ago? Um, I would definitely, and this is one I think a lot of people lack in and a lot of people probably neglect this part is the whole, like it's easy. I mean, you know, it's obviously a lot of work, but it's easy to go out and hustle, buy products, flip them on eBay and Amazon, and then just keep rinsing and repeating that cycle. But the back end of the business, I think is a lot of people lack in is, you know, taxes, which nobody wants to talk about. And, you know, being able to like, figure out where all your expenses are going, you know, your cost of goods, your, you know, your boxes, your supplies, your labels, you know, your gas, your meals, you know, all this different things, you know, computers and stuff like that. And, and I would definitely would have like, I would have slapped myself, you know, to like make sure I, I got that side of the business down. Number one, that should, that, you know, that, that need that. I think a lot of people, a lot of people, Definitely neglect that like a lot, I think. And, and I talk to a lot of resellers and it's like taxes and that whole side of the business where a lot of people I think are lacking. I think I would definitely tell myself to, to, to pay attention more to that and make sure I have that side of the business handled. Okay. Now I want to pick your brain because you're all the way up in New Jersey and I'm in Florida. So it's not like I can walk around and just look over your shoulder. So if I was to go out with you and we were going out sourcing, doing, doing some retail arbitrage, what kind of margins are you looking at? Because I feel like your margins are higher on eBay than it is on Amazon, oh, yeah. but on oh, Amazon, yeah. you're, your, your, your sales velocity on is higher on Amazon. So like, for example, you might go to the clearance at Walmart or target, find some items and then boom. And then immediately, you know, ship them into Amazon FBA and your sales velocity is a lot higher. Whereas like today I went into the thrift store today and I spent $6 at the thrift store and I'm going to turn my $6 into $120 and I was in and out in 10 minutes. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like my margins are going to be higher on eBay, but I may sit on that item longer waiting for that right buyer to come along. Whereas you, when you're on Amazon, you're, you already know, you can already see use, use different data and you already have like little charts that tell you how many of these sell per month, what the sales rank is, what the velocity is of this item before you even go touch it and grab it. So kind of what, what margins are you looking at? Like if we're together and we're like, hey man, let's hit up this toy section here at Walmart. What kind of margins are we looking at? Are we buying an item for $2 and selling it for eight? Like what, what is the margins we're looking for? Um, when I'm buying a product in store doing RA, I always look at how much work is it gonna take to sell as far as do I have to remove a sticker? Do I have to poly bag it? Do I have to bundle it with another item? When I have to do that, depending on the store, because yeah, I'm sure, you, like you know, if you're shopping at Ollie's or TJ Maxx or somewhere, like them sick, like those stickers, like can, they're tough sometimes. You could spend you know a little bit of time peeling them. So if I'm peeling stickers off of something, like I say a TJ Maxx or an Ollie's sticker, like then I want my margin to be a little bit higher because I'm not you know like you know if I'm at Target and I see a stack of like uh, you know say I don't know a video game, say the video game's ten bucks. And I can make, you know, three, three, four bucks on it. And I'll take, and it's a decently fast seller. I know it's not going to tank. 
and there's no stickers on it, like I'll grab that. No problem. I have no problem making three bucks on a $10 item. You know, as long as I just have to throw my own label on it, throw it in the box, it's going to sell quick and then move on. Like if it takes me, I have to bundle it, remove stickers, poly bag it and do all this, then I'm going to avoid that type of stuff and put my time in where I can like make it either a fast, pro a fast profit, maybe a little bit less, but fast. Or if I got to do some more extra work to it, I want my margin to be higher to, you know, warrant me putting the time into that item. Okay, so your, your answer is it just depends on how much work you have. And also it would depend on the sales rank because each category has a certain sales rank velocity of each item. And the mm -hmm. lower the sales rank is, the better, right? It's not the yeah. highest. It's like if your sales rank is lower, that means that the sales velocity is higher in that particular category. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I kind of wanted to, we're running out of time. We usually do this show for an hour. We've had you on for 55 minutes. I greatly appreciate you coming on and hanging out, man. This is the first time I've got to meet up with you and hopefully we'll have you back on again in the future and we'll hang out and talk because I feel like you're a real down to earth person. And uh, if, but you have, a, the thing is you have a blue collar work ethic where you're not afraid to roll your sleeves up and get in there and, and find these items. And what is the best thing that you love most about reselling? It's almost like a little, treasure hunt right like you're looking for easter eggs because we're close to easter right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you did you get that from me <laughs> uh, yeah i watched one of your interviews so yeah, it also okay. it just happened to be close to easter so okay, i just thought yeah. i would throw that in there so go ahead <laughs> to say that that's it like you know like as a kid i i always remembered like my mom would hide easter eggs around our apartments and she'd be like you're getting hot you're getting cold and like i would find the easter eggs and like that feeling of finding an Easter egg with like a jelly bean in it was like the best <laughs> feeling in the world. So when I'm at Walmart and Target, like it's almost like you're hunting for stuff. And like, instead of jelly beans, you, the, the shelves are riddled with, you know, five and $10 bills, you know, like I get that same feeling. And so I love that. But honestly, like my favorite thing about Am like just the reselling and all that, like is the people, honestly, I like literally it's so crazy. I used to have like, before I started reselling, like I would say like 90% of my friends are all resellers now. And I, that is probably the best thing about the reseller community is, you know, like everybody has their own business, you know, like what is, you know, like people are on eBay doing this and that people are on Amazon doing this and that, but it's like, we all have that one connection that we all have different business models, but we're all connected. And it's like, we can all be friends and we can learn. Everybody can learn from everybody. Someone that just started selling today or it's been on selling for 10 years. It's like, everybody has something to share. You know, everybody has a story and everybody can learn from everybody. And that's probably my favorite thing about selling, reselling is the community for sure. Yeah, everybody has a certain niche and I may know a lot about video games or DVDs and somebody else may know a lot about books or it may be a different niche. And they may be able to say, hey, look out for this item. And if you're in this particular category or thrift store or RA and you see this particular item, you're like, hey, this is a $25 bill. Let me go ahead and grab it. So, yeah, the community is awesome. But anyways, man, we greatly appreciate you coming on today. Give me your final thoughts and we'll let you go, man. And hopefully um, either if I don't run into you on the road, hopefully we'll have you on in a couple months and you could kind of give us the update and we'll hang out again soon sometime, right? Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And anyone that's watching, you know, if you ever want to chat, you have questions, whatever, whatever, like hit me up. Like I'm down to, you know, if I can help you in any way or help further your business or personal life, whatever. Like I love to watch people grow. I like to watch people make money. And yeah, you know, tell, tell, tell them where they can find you at on Instagram. I have your links in the description, but tell them where they can find you at on YouTube and Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, just my name, Jameson Philippi. Um, and I do have a YouTube channel that hopefully this like helps me start motivating me to actually post something. Cause I don't, at the last video, I think I posted was like four years ago and we did like a reseller interview. And I remember, I think I had like a clown, like wig on or something. I don't even remember. Wow. It was embarrassing. But I was like, you know what? I did it. I'm living with it and I'm keeping the video up. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Instagram, I'm on you know, Facebook, I'm on uh, Jamison Philippi as well. And um, yeah, definitely. I appreciate you guys and I had a good time. Yeah, man. I, I love your energy, Jameson. You just have this high energy where it's like nothing's going to get you down. It could be a cloudy day outside, but where you're at, it's sunshine and rainbows. So you just have this positive energy. So look me up next time you're in Florida, man. We'll hang out. And uh, I greatly appreciate you coming on. I just wanted to say hey to a few people in the chat. We got Thrift and Flips says, well, it said Jameson need more reselling mm -hmm. friends. We got the flipping accountant says, thanks for being on tonight. And uh, we have e reseller, uh, Eblis reseller says, great guests. Thanks, Jeff and Jameson. This is going to be our guest for tomorrow night on Wednesday is Issa Eblis, reseller, tomorrow at 4 o'clock. 
So if you guys want to come in and hang out and learn more about his business model, he has an FBA business model for eBay. So if you want to learn more about it, stop in and hang out with us then. But go ahead, Jameson. Give me your final thoughts, bro, and we'll let you go. Um, final thoughts, man. And this is, uh, you know, I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, it's like, you know, like the most important thing is like you, you know, like make sure you're right. You know, you know, like everyone doesn't have to be on the same level as fitness and eating right and doing healthy things like but like take some time every day, even if it's for five minutes, take care of yourself, you know, you know, read a couple positive affirmations, you know, smile like, you know, like I, every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do in the morning is I smile for 60 seconds before I look right. at my phone. I'm, I'm half asleep. You know, I smile even sometimes I don't want to do it. Like, you know, put you first, you know, like and, you know, I, I really hope that I, you know, I love watching, you know, all you guys like grow and succeed. And, you know, I just want to say I believe in you guys and. I, I, I love watching resellers grow. Like I love, I, I love resellers that come from nothing and they turn around and make this a business or, you know, they grow YouTube and Instagram and they, they grow. And I, I love to see people come from nothing and just like rise and like kick butt, you know? So um, yeah, man, just make sure you guys put yourselves first and take care of yourself. And, you know, we only get one life and nobody gets out of it alive. So <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the older I get, the quicker it goes by. So anyways, mm -hmm. I wanted to thank everybody in the chat for coming by, hanging out. Richie hustles, Katie reads, the flipping right. accountant was here. Uh, the Lone Star Picker was here in the chat. And come yeah. back tomorrow on Wednesday. We're going to hang out with eBliss Reseller Solutions. So I'll see you then. You guys have a great night. I'll see you in the next one. Thank our guest, Jameson, for coming on and hanging out with us, man. Bye, yes. everybody. Peace. Bye.